Well, the first thing I need to do is correct myself and tell people I was wrong. Because when I say never, well, guess what? I always should know better than to never say never because never's going to come knocking on your door. <laughs> yes, and let me show you why. All right, I'll save time here. If you type in 3222, it'll bring this up. DA210010. 2956-2924-2984 and 3222 Kyogle Road. And if you have a look at that, on the 14th of January 2021, a DA a development application was submitted to Council for an integrated development, stage concept development application for multi multiple rural land sharing communities with Stage 1 seeking approval for the upgrade of existing private road and associated earthworks, vegetation removal and site construction office and storage area. Wow, they're actually asking for permission for vegetation removal. They didn't ask for any of that on 3222 in December 2020 when they got the bulldozer in and cleared up and made it look like hey now you can stick in all 26 lots there now but I'm getting ahead of myself so what we're looking at here is to upgrade of the existing private road now looking through these documents it's stated there's over 50 kilometers of existing road infrastructure of that Mark McMurtry had stated that 28 kilometers of road were it was going to cost them a million to seal the 28 kilometers of road a million per kilometer and this was what he said to Max Egan but uh, it's not actually what they've got in mind because for the large part the upgrade of the existing private road looking at just the images provided the upgrade is to make graded unsealed roads with selected areas that will have sealed bits in there. And let me show you where those sealed bits are. I'll leave you a link for this or you can just go to the council and search any of the addresses. It'll bring it all up. I have downloaded all these documents and named them as they are here. There's over 500, nearly 600 megabytes worth of documents. It's time consuming. If you want to save that time, I'll leave a link and you can download the zip that's got all of them in there for you. Just as a shortcut anyway, because yeah, I wish somebody had done the shortcuts for me on this. So from the few images that I've seen, and mind you, there are 53 documents and two and a half thousand pages and I've glanced at images so this is just uh, an initial look at it by the information given and on the maps they show over here there's going to be a sealed strip there here there will be a sealed strip and somewhere over here there's not much mention for over here because these roads actually have to be created this road here, this road here, here, here. Most of these roads, these coloured roads, this one, they have to be created because they, that they're like a track if they exist at all. And for the 37 million that's stated, 18 million of that is for the roads. There is other things involved in it. So the 1 million for one kilometre of sealed road is not going to happen. There's 18 million that they're anticipating to pretty much um, upgrade the existing roads to actually create graded unsealed roads that can withstand uh, fairly heavy traffic. And all of these roads, including these ones up here that they've, I've added in to ensure that it's correct, it works out to roughly be about 35, 36 kilometers. So everything that you can see marked on there, there's about 36, 37 kilometers. I can give you an accurate figure, but I'm only using rough figures here so that you can get a ballpark figure 
of how many kilometres of road have to be tended to. Because there's very little of those existing roads as marked on the maps that have been submitted to Council and the Council have uploaded, there's very few of those roads that actually are not going to need work. So for context here, down here where the little teacup is, that's the Mount Burrell. There we go, Sphinx Rock Cafe. Well, it used to be. It's now, well, <laughs> I'll get into that in another video. So there's the Mount Burrell commercial district, what's left of it. The only operating thing is the shop, and the shop cannot stock its shelves. And that's by the people going in there. <laughs> Then along here, we've got, Ma this is Mandalay um, Road, and this is the private access off through here. That biochar industries is actually Dolph Cook, which is what he's got going up in that area there. Now this little area over here that sort of looks like a Christmas stocking boot is the Mebbin Springs development. They've already put in sealed roads, and as you can see, it is, I mean, there are 14 groups that I've identified here of community housing. This is one. So this is one fourteenth of what they propose for this whole lot here. So that's Mebbin Springs selling lots now, the first stage of selling lots. Now over here in this area has always been what Peter Van Leishout had, in, had intended to be the village centre, where the interface with the public. That's also still marked as the village centre. And it is where I am assuming that when Adrian Brennock talks about putting in uh, a medical centre, a, a sacred geometry medical centre and a sacred geometry pub, that that's where they're thinking about putting it in. But before I get on to the housing, that what it will look like, let's look at this a little bit further. Because according to the documents available now through the council website, right where my little hand is there, is where they have house site two, and it's the area that is the possible site of starting construction. This area up here is where they intend to set up the site construction office. Now, I'm going to take it out now and I'm going to show you that should this go ahead and all these roads are put in, which they will be dirt roads. Most of the house lots that they've got marked on their map are right on the road. Uh, you have to clear an acre around every lot. So w to get that acre around the lot, the road frontage seems rather narrow and you'd have longer blocks or they'd be deeper blocks. They'd go back further. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through each of these areas and show what what it will look like on the land. But first of all, I've got to put the houses in. This is what took a lot of the time. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot of them. There's 395 all in their own little groups. So according to this map, there's three entrances, but only two are really what the community intends they should be using. Because one of the things they actually claim is that this is a gated community, all right? It's sort of like gated, like jails are gated. You've got to get through something, and if you're not allowed to go in, you're not allowed to be there. So there is a gate down here at the bottom of 3222, and oh, over here at this entrance, 
they intend to do a little bit of sealed road around the corner here too and to actually make it more so that trucks getting around there have an easier time because it's too sharp of a bend for them apparently. So I'm assuming being a gated community that a gate at one end is no good unless there's a gate at the other. <laughs> so they would have to put in a gate down here. That Biochar Industries is Dolph Cook. And he's up at this location up through here, so I've been told. Because that's part of the land that is jointly owned by Peter Van Lyshout, Dolph Cook and Darko Kovac. This land down here is owned by Kemp Cove, who is solely owned by Peter Van Lyshout. All the rest is uh, Peter Van Lyshout, just in his own name. So if we look at the Mandalay Road entrance too, this is not an entrance that is supposed to be used for the community because this is already in essence a private road for the people living up there it's not a through road to somewhere else and as you can see here though by where I've marked by their map the houses that they intend to put in that will be used as a through road for those people up in this area and probably to get up here because going up this way is probably a lot easier than going up this way I'm assuming anyway but put it this way I think that this track over here well this track over here isn't as good as Mandalay Road which is why there's been a lot of traffic that's gone along there but anyway let's get on with seeing what it will look like with all the houses in there all these 395 lots and let's say that well we all know how many cars are attached to each household these days so double that number let's say 700 cars and at least well a couple and a couple of kids so but let's just say a thousand people and 700 cars once it's all done there will be also five community centers and one amphitheater now I've also it's only been a quick glance at what I've been able to look at I cannot see where they've noticed certain other existing buildings they must be noted somewhere because the ones that are noted over here are shed number eight and nine and ten or whatever and yet there's none of the ones before that so it must be identifying you know scattered all over the place there are these buildings and the amphitheater that you see in the videos over here see that's right there that's already a structure that's there this over here is plan another community center planned to be built this by the diagrams that the council have made available is sawmill 2 and over here where this hand is now used to be the location of a cattle dip and down here over here see where my hand is here there there looks like there is already pre-existing structures there that's marked as a piggery one thing I also noticed too when they are marking all these things on even though the diagrams are marked as 2019 this very distinctive shape has been singled out to consistently show that it is bare. They are using archival footage of before the pine trees were on it and it was bare and it was also bare all the way through along here. And that was one common thing I did notice in just the things that I looked at of how they're representing it will go into people's minds if I didn't know any better I'd think wow that is bare yeah let them build on there but I do know better that it is and you do have to really look for it that it, on one image it says that this is old archival footage and I thought yeah well it's the same on other images 
but you haven't said that. That actually looks like in 2019, that's what it looks like. And it's not, because it's not just this area that's bare, it's all through here. Anyway, moving on. So if 322 is used as the main entrance, and you're unlucky enough to be one of these people on that dirt road, well, you're going to um, have a lot of traffic going in and out past your place. It's not actually going to be quiet. Even though it's a private road, it's still going to be a fairly busy road, unless everybody is going to use other entrances. Now, be which they're not going to because a lot of it will go take them too far out of their way. They will use driving past your place to get to theirs. So these first 26 people are going to live with a lot of traffic going past their place all the time. And because they're not going to be sealed roads that, and dirt roads, they are going to be dusty. But let's look at this first lot. There's 26 marked on there. This is the original house at 322 where Mark McMurtry has been living for a while. And you see in the videos where uh, they're all gathered round having this barbie and there's a bit of a shed, that's where they were outside here. Now, every single place I'm going to show you, every one of these houses has to have an acre cleared around it. That's a bushfire requirement. So every house has to have an acre cleared around it. Well, these first 26 are really lucky because they came in with a bulldozer at Christmas time in 2020 and bulldozed the whole lot. So y you don't have to clear nothing. It's down to the soil. You're not going to have any privacy even. Yeah, and it actually would make it look like if you're coming in driving up this first part here and seeing it all done, you would actually think that stage one had already been completed and now they're, they're breaking ground in stage two. But no, they're not. <laughs> so we go up the road here and we get to this little row of 13 houses that are all set in natural bushland and that means that around each one of those there goes 13 acres of natural bushland, plus the community centre and what has to be cleared around that. So let's just say 14 acres. Then we go over to this next part here. There's 15 over here, 20 here. I'll take it out a bit so it's not so in. And 36 through here. So of these ones, of the 15, these ones here will have to remove natural bushland. Probably even these ones to a certain degree as well up around here. Perhaps number nine doesn't have to worry about it at all. <laughs> but for sure these 20, they can just move straight in once the road's there. In fact, they could probably do it right now if they weren't already. Oh, but they don't have approval for even the roads yet. Yeah. Now these ones over here, the first 12 here minimum, are going to have to clear another acre. So already we're losing lots and lots of acres of natural bush and we still haven't chopped down any pine. But we will because for all these houses here that are still chopping down natural bush, here we're going to start getting houses that chop down pine. So you'd be lucky to get, what, 12, 14 acres of pine removed there as clearage around the house. Considering that these ones over here don't have to chop anything down, I suppose, that's a blessing. But we're certainly going to increase our pine to bush ratio removal here. 45 lots that are purely in the pine plantation. So that's 45 acres of bush gone like that. Now as I said, where you're living in these communities, you've got three three entrances, but two really that are only part of the, the gated community. The other's sort of like a back road that really you shouldn't be using, but even though it's there. So if you're coming in here, 
to get over to any of these places over here because it's actually closer and quicker. That's a lot of traffic. You've got hundreds of people in that area that can come through this way every day, back and forth, driving along that dirt road, stirring up the dust. So for the first 26 that buy in, or that maybe it's the last 26 that that's the worst spots of all <laughs> nobody wants, yeah, nobody does want to build there where it is like living on the main road in suburbia. Because it, that is suburbia. The only way you get privacy is to stick up a fence. So anyway, we've cleared quite a bit of bush up until this area here when we've balanced it a bit more out with pine. But now let's go back. It's like the fin of a fish, you know, the backbone straddled off in each direction. So this one here, there's no apparent houses in the natural bush. They have tried to utilise clearing all that in pine. So that's 23 acres of pine cleared there. This one here and all of these ones along the bottom here, there's no pine and there's pretty much no roads. So they've got to be fresh, well they've actually got to remove the trees in some instances to actually make the graded unsealed roads that would be suitable that would pass for stage one construction. Other than that, um, you have to remove certain trees just to put the road in and then you're going to have the houses that are also going to remove them. So between there, there's another 11 acres of bush, another 23 acres of bush. And this little straggler here, down here, attach that to the four, uh, 35 along here that have to clear that is natural bush because uh, that's all part of that count. But these roads here my, and this one over here and the end up past here are pretty much constructing fresh roads. Maybe clearing out an existing track, maybe that's how they found that track through, but uh, you know, some tracks aren't roads even if you can get a car along them. Now I might point out here that there's already so many acres and acres of natural bush that have been removed to put these houses up. And you know, like last bushfire season, it devastated me and I'm sure it did other people to see the, the koalas that actually survived and how many actually died. I mean, their habitat is getting smaller and smaller and there are koalas that live in this habitat that it has actually been shown in the documents that have been lodged with the council that I've had a quick look at. Now I haven't as yet tallied up what I believe to be a rough, rough estimate of the natural bush that will have to be removed just to accommodate the houses as compared to the pine plantation that, well, as you can see here, this whole plantation here isn't going to be removed unless they are actually part of what makes up the back block of these people. They may choose to remove them, but ultimately, you know, it's, well, I don't see it going back that far. There's still a lot of pine plantation that's going to be in place that they could have actually said, right, we're not going to stick any housing in unless it's removing pine. Because they did say that they are not removing any natural bush. And yet they have clearly identified that that's exactly what they have to do to even do half of what they want to do here, is to remove acres and acres of natural bush. Habitat to precious habitat for koalas. I haven't seen these species of trees identified yet to see how many the surveyor actually identified in the area that would koalas would need, but that is something that will be looked into. But it's not just koalas. You, you could imagine that if all of these lots, all of this, these people and traffic, pretty much it is going to reduce the habitat of all wildlife and it is going to introduce like you can't have cats there but you know what 
dogs like to do hunting and most people don't keep their dogs on a chain when you find them in communities like this. They follow the person around. You know, <laughs> they believe in freedom, not in chains. Anyway, off subject. Let's get back to the housing and what it is going to replace. Along here, we've got at least another 14, 15 acres of natural bush that will need to be cleared for those houses there. The rest of them come up through pine and are getting rid of pine. But then you've got houses that are also at the top of where the community centre is. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to get into that here. <laughs> Trying to keep on subject. This one here, this next road here, only this pocket here is pine. All the rest is natural bush. And it is not looking like it's going all the way up here it actually looks like it's coming over closer down to the water storage the water already here so that's another 21 acres of natural bush to be removed so as i think if we added it up now there'd already be a hundred acres probably minimum that needs to be removed so far then we get over to this one. Now this one has only got, uh, well we've got 8, 11, that are 11 acres say of natural bush removal. The rest appear to cut their way through pine plantation. So there's a lot of pine plantation removal necessary for house lots the people that buy in yes I'm going to have this well you've got to remove an acre of pine trees oh you beaut but the one problem I found is this community centre up here on their map it's actually marked that it connects only to these these two exclusive use areas there is no marked public access to it you know no offshoot road even though there is a road through here that they would cut their way in probably there it is not marked so I haven't marked it either it's just sitting there in the middle of nowhere for the time being maybe that's the retreat <laughs> you got to get there by foot anyway so moving over to this area as you can see from the visual I don't need to explain it they don't need to clear anything that's pretty much all cleared except for down here these first couple down here may have to clear something away certainly the community center. Now when it comes to the actual positioning and layout of these this area uh, I'm a little bit unsure as to how it actually is. I mean I can only go on limited information and there are different tracks marked and if you follow the contours of how they've done their road you know maybe I missed a bend I don't know well I've tried not to I've tried to mirror what they have so that I can place these houses and give a perspective of what it's going to look like when it's finished if it's finished and what it's going to look like on the land because all of these are going to be on the hilltop and where you can see the hilltops you're going to be seeing lots of lights scattering across the night sky now yeah, it used to be dark <laughs> you could see stars now this area here is apparently where Dolph Cook is and that's his terracing that he's done there. It's still, you know, it's weird the way that it's been done. But there are house lots marked and if correct they could indicate already existing structures. The road, Google Marks over here, um, no sorry, Google Marks the road there but you can see the road goes up around there. So in a lot of cases I actually followed the road and ignored where Google said it went like around here because that's not where it is. You can see where the road is, it's on the track. And not all places are going to be covered with trees that you can see the bed up uh, dirt road. You know it's dirt road, it's very distinguishable. So there's uh, another nine lots planned in there. And then this is the last area over here of 24 that are planned. 
and that is probably part of the original where you had the original village concept and public interface down here and up the back you had the residential area and so that was a a three lot approval that was reduced down from six and now they've gone from this three lot to hmm that's big isn't it now let's have a look at where the bores are all right again taken from the documents that the council has so nicely uploaded and made publicly available there is 17 bore test spots noted don't know whether they intend to set up bores at each and every one of those spots or whether they would look in the future at other spots because well it's clear that a lot of the documentation was done before 3222 was even bought into it and there's no water bores around anything that's attached to the property at 3222. It's all associated with Peter Van Leishout's land. As you will note too, when you look at some of the PDFs, the documentation does go back to 2006 and 2008, the period when it was applicable to what Peter Van Leishout originally wanted to achieve. So now there is the submission for uh, approval in a development application for this whole NICAP on Minjimble through NCV Enterprises Proprietary Limited and courtesy of the imagery that is supplied in the council's website and their documents that are available that's where you can identify the piggery the sawmill 2 the cattle dip all the bores and over here as house 2 area possible start of construction it's also where they note that that's where they that right there is I haven't put that on yet but where they intend to set up the construction office so if the um, development is given approval this will create a high density even though it's a large area if you look at the same area anywhere else, even the cleared area, there is nowhere near that amount of density. And even when you, and surrounding lookouts, the visual aspects, they're going to be looking at a lot of bared up stuff where there used to be beautiful hills. But there are so many places where you are going to be living in your neighbor's pockets. These two areas here, this one here with 26 and this one here with 20, there's no privacy. Where you're living right opposite your neighbour, I mean they're only going to put in unsealed roads to the front door of where you just have exclusive right to. Like anywhere, you're going to have to create a driveway yourself to get in there I mean, you haven't got the problem of a setback for uh, getting water connected or electricity or anything like that. But you still have to access, if you're going to go to the wards, the back of your property, you've still actually got to clear the land, clear an acre for your house to go on. You've got to have road access to it. And that's a lot of work before you can even get to do it. Unless you happen to be living in this area here where you can just do drop in any time you want I wouldn't even be surprised if there were one setting up tents there already or some kind of thing so this is pretty much the nightcap on Minjimbul summed up the Mebane Springs development down here has already got approval for lots and it is so so much smaller so much less impact and is well if you look at that land even back 12 years ago it was as bare then as it is now it might be good grazing land for wallabies but as far as treed habitat it's not very good and uh, there is just too many acres of natural bush that is going to impact the natural wildlife you know, I don't care how many surveyors or anything you get in. Common sense is common sense. That 
level of people is going to drive out animal populations. It is just going to be that simple. And, you know, let's just hope you never, ever have to face a bushfire because, again, oh, I just don't see an easy out. But that's another video anyway. This is the density of what is planned at Nightcap on Minjimbal. And I'm definitely going to discuss this in far greater detail, especially now since so many things are not conjecture, they can't be guessed at. They are actually put forward documentation that has been presented to the council and the council has uploaded it for public access and which you as the public can access and have a look at. And on that note, I'm going to leave it and I'll say catch you next time. Bye.